the links in the chat box as well. So we have a packed agenda today. Um, and before we begin, I'm pleased to say that we are also joined by Connor Donaldson, the head of implementation at the IIS Secretariat and our partner in organizing this webinars. So I'll briefly hand over to Connor to say a few remarks on the IIS side. Welcome Connor and please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much, Carolyn. And it's an absolute pleasure to be with uh, you guys this morning and um, very much looking forward to the dialogue. So index-based insurance is an innovative and increasingly popular approach to insurance provision. The product involves contracts where a claim is defined with a reference to a predetermined index. Often the index seeks to reflect losses arising from weather and catastrophic events, attracted by the opportunity to avoid the cost and administrative delay from traditional insurance business models. This attraction can extend to having the potential to avoid adverse selection and moral hazard as well. These features provide the promise of significantly reducing underwriting and claim assessment costs. They also allow for claim settlement processes to be quicker and more objective. The combination of these elements has encouraged efforts to reduce the barriers to providing effective and affordable insurance particularly for lower income groups that tend to be more vulnerable to weather and climate related events. Improved access to insurance can directly and indirectly enhance livelihoods, reduce poverty, and create opportunities for economic advancement. Regarding agriculture in particular, the provision of effective insurance is also seen as a way to facilitate a more productive agricultural sector. In June 2018, the IIS published an issues paper on index-based insurances, particularly in inclusive insurance markets. The paper focused on those types of index-based insurances that are usually directed at weather-related or natural catastrophe event risk. The paper provides some background on index insurance, explores some of the relevant issues from a supervisory and policy perspective, and identifies some of the regulatory considerations that are relevant when looking at index-based insurance and its appropriateness within markets. Since the paper has been published, there has been further market development. While many of the conclusions drawn in the paper remain relevant, I do commend the HYI for organizing this topic, for organizing this dialogue on this topic, and for facilitating a discussion amongst supervisors and relevant stakeholders on index-based insurance and to hopefully feed in to further discussion within the supervisory context on how index-based insurance, if appropriate, could be utilized within markets to enhance access to insurance and increase risk management practices. With that, Carolyn, uh, thank you very much again for the opportunity to offer my welcome. I look forward to the discussions today, and thank you again. Um, thank you, Connor, for those remarks as well as setting the scene on the topic. Um, I will now hand over to our moderator uh, for the webinar today, Hannah Grant. Hannah will undoubtedly be familiar to many of you joining today as she's the head of the Secretariat of the A2II. And before the A2II, Hannah worked for the insurance industry, first at the Lloyds of London, and then more recently in Brussels, where she was the head of international affairs at Insurance Europe, while also running the Secretariat of the Global Federation of Insurance Associations. And now with this, I'll hand over to Hannah. Welcome, Hannah, and please go ahead. Thank you, Carolyn, and good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody on the call. I'm actually very excited to be moderating today's webinar as index insurance is really revolutionizing access to formal insurance for small businesses, families, and the vulnerable. Insurance, index insurance is not new, but in recent years, there have been some significant technological advances, allowing for more precise pricing and the integration of innovative distribution channels. This has enabled index insurance to establish itself as a viable option for providing insurance services to excluded or underserved segments, segments that might otherwise have not have been able to obtain protection against the risks they face. Index-based insurance, also known as parametric insurance, is constantly evolving, today reaches a wide range of consumers. 
index insurance also has applicability beyond coverage against weather and catastrophe risks that Connor referred to in his introduction. It's opening up new possibility and opportunities um, with these new types of coverages to close the protection gap. However, key to index insurance's ongoing success and sustainability is having a well-designed and enabling regulatory framework policy environment to underpin it. At a time when governments are emerging from the pandemic and are facing a wide range of challenges, including the need to handle complex and interrelated policy areas as they rebuild economies, index insurance has the potential to be an important ally for governments committed to achieving the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Firstly, as part of strategies to address climate change, so SDG 13, is a key component to achieving food security, SDG 2. Index Insurance also has demonstrated that it can build resilience by enabling clients to access finance, increase productivity and income, so SDG 9, thereby reducing poverty, SDG 1, and vulnerability. This demonstrates the important role that insurance supervisors can play in supporting sustainable economic development. Through regulatory and policy initiatives, supervisors can ensure that their insurance market offers the necessary range and diversity of products and services that support the sustainable development goals in an inclusive manner. For these reasons, interest in index-based insurance in emerging cunt markets and developing economies is increasing among supervisors with various specific regulations being passed and other steps taken to recognize index-based risk transfer contracts as insurance. Anyway, we have a great lineup and um, three great speakers um, today. So I don't want to go into too much more detail now. Um, as the speakers coming up will provide both a supervisory and an industry um, perspective on the topic. To kick us off, we are joined by my colleague Regina Samoas, the A2I's Regional Coordinator for Latin America. Regional, Regina will be presenting the A2I's work on index insurance and the findings of a recent survey conducted in the second half of last year, supervisors and also some representatives from the insurance sector. Sorry, in industry of the insurance sector. We will then hear from Cynthia Ayoro Nisabuga from the Insurance Regulatory Authority of Uganda. Cynthia is an inspection officer and she will present Uganda's regulatory approach. This will be followed by a presentation from Jakob Nugahara. Jakob is the head of the <coughs> Agriculture Insurance Department at Asorani Central Asia in Tunisia and will present on ACA's health and agricultural insurance schemes. With that, I hand over to Regina. Thanks, Hannah. Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you for your interest in the topic. Uh, I, as Hannah mentioned, I will present some findings from the survey on index-based insurance carried out by A2AI in the second half of 2020. This is uh, an update from a 2018 A2AI survey, and it aims to support supervisors and other stakeholders to understand and evaluate index-based insurance. For those who uh, of you who are not familiar with index-based insurance, also know as parametric insurance, it is an insurance product which payments to the policyholder are triggered by a pre-agreed index, which should be objective and independent, for instance, temperature or real speed. In theory, um, any risk that may be linked to an index could be covered with index-based insurance. Next, please. In total, 28 supervisory authorities were interviewed in 27 countries, 25 of them from emerging markets and developing economies. On the industry side, we had 11 respondents from both emerging and developing economies, as well as from developed countries. Next, please. And 16 jurisdictions indicated that the legislation force allows or raises no barriers to index-based insurance. African and Asian supervisors have launched the national index-based insurance programs in the past decade, such as Mongolia in 2006 and Kenya in 2009. Latin America uh, seems to follow this trend as a number of countries have made index-based insurance products viable in the past five years, 
either under the current regulatory framework or by issuing new regulations. Next, please. The survey findings also indicate that three main concerns among supervisors refers to inadequate or insufficient data, the limited actuarial technic and technical capacity of insurers to implement index products, and the adverse basis risk. The lack of technical skills or, or experience of supervisors themselves with this type of insurance is also a major concern, which is why most of them consider it necessary to provide a specific training to their teams. But no doubt, a key issue is the fact that index-based risk transfer contracts may not fit within the definition of insurance and therefore within the current legal and regulatory framework. Next, please. In fact, the legal impossibility of recognizing index-based risk transfer contract as insurance and within the regulatory framework can become the main barrier to index insurance. This is the case for jurisdictions uh, where the legal definition of insurance of insurance is strongly linked to the concept of indemnification of actual loss or damage or where index-based risk transfer contracts fall under the de derivatives framework. To address these issues, supervisors have adopted different approaches depending on whether or not their governing laws provide flexibility to allow for favorable inter interpretations. Uh, three regulatory approaches were identified through the survey. The first one is the approval of a specific laws or, or regulations regulating the space insurance, providing legal certainty for this type of insurance. Cynthia from Uganda will give us an example of this approach right after this presentation. Another approach is the issue of a legal opinion in favor of including index based products within the scope of the insurance legislation based on the insurable interest at the date of contracting. In today's afternoon session, Costa Rica will present its interesting approach. The third approach is the adoption of a pilot project, generally in the context of a regulatory sandbox, as an exception to the governing law. Uh, this can allow a product to be tested in a controlled environment before introducing any alterations or approving any specific, regula specific regulations. Next, please. Uh, well, the industry response also indicated to what they see as barriers and facilitators to the development of index-based insurance. Among the barriers, the following, the following stand out, uh, the absence of index-based insurance regulation or even a ban of these products in some jurisdictions, the lack of data and the lack of understanding of index insurance products by supervisors. For this reason, uh, they stress the importance of prior discussion with the supervisors in order to ensure adequate explanations about the products. Regarding facilitators, they underscore the importance of setting up regulatory sandboxes or innovation hubs. Uh, similar to innovation hubs, uh, insurers in the more developed countries suggested the setup of a structure to assess benefits of innovative products as well as its adverse effects. They also suggest a limited window of opportunity to allow corrective action both before and after a product implementation. Other suggestions are also highlights such as more flexible regulations to simulate new products, simpler training requirements for intermediaries, special, special tracks treatments, um, carrying out agriculture censuses, and very importantly that supervisors play more active roles as facilitators. For example, by coordinating a guided discussion between stakeholders. Next, please. 
Well, according to the supervisors take part, taking part in the survey, there are some 53 products being marketed, being marketed in the 16 jurisdictions where index-based insurance is permitted. These products are offered by 74 uh, insurers. Uh, as you can see, there are more insurers than products because some of the programs implemented in these jurisdictions are structured in the form of consortia with a single standard product for all insurers. This is the case, for instance, in Ghana, Mongolia, and Mozambique. Next, please. Uh, at macro, micro level, most products still focus on risks related to agriculture and livestock, especially for smallholder farmers. But there is a new range of products providing protection for several segments, ranging from low income consumers and SMEs to more sophisticated clients, such as construction and transportation companies. At the meso level, they target the agribusiness sector, banks, and microfinance institutions. The distribution channels used include the traditional ones, but also alternative channels such as retail store, inter internet platforms, farmers associations and cooperatives, saving and credit cooperatives, societies, and other ag aggregators. Uh, in general, products are markets on an embedded basis, for instance, tied to inputs and distributed by agribusiness traders or through, through, through tied sales involving, involving other financial services such as credit provided by banks and MFIs. Next, please. Well, agriculture insurance coverage is, still prevails based on agro meteorological indexes with an increase in area yielded products. But a series of innovative products is observed with more complex and precise indexes. Uh, for example, a health microinsurance that uses the number of blood cells as an index. Jacob uh, is going to present on this later today. Uh, or yet, damage risks for temperature sensitive cargoes measured by temperature sensors. There is also an increase in the number of products that cover asset risks and others designed to meet the needs of more sophisticated clients such as net losses for, to a hydropower plant caused by drought in Colombia. Next please. As a final message, I would like to highlight that index-based insurance, due to its structure and its rapid evolution, raised the need for continuous monitoring, including its impact on consumers. This requires uh, that both the industry and mainly supervisors are properly trained to face the new challenges that are undoubtedly due to come. To those interested in knowing more about index insurance, we have to inform you that the publication Index Insurance 2020 uh, Status and Regulatory Challenges is already available on HYI website. Thank you for your attention, Hannah. Back to you now. Thank you, Regina, and really interesting, and also such a huge contrast when you think back to the last stock take that the A2I did, which I think was back in 2018. I think there we saw that actually no supervisors had yet adopted a specific um, regulatory approach or regulation for index-based insurance. And now from your survey, we can, or the survey, we can see that, I mean, there's been significant progress there. Um, Regina, I'm going to ask you one quick question, actually, before I'm um, going on to, to Cynthia, who's presenting on Uganda's approach next. Um, you mentioned three different approaches, actually, that broadly the, the approaches by supervisors fell into. And I was just wondering, out of these sort of three different approaches, whether you felt one of these was maybe more effective. Um, in fact, I think it all depends on the context of each jurisdiction. The most important thing, especially in the case of products focused on low income or and the service segments, such as agriculture, is that this products be recognized as insurance within the insurance regulatory framework and not treated as instruments of financial speculation. Because only then 
can they be supervisors? Uh, these uh, does not uh, does not not allow the, uh, the sorry. Uh, this does not allow us depending on the existence or not of a specific regulations. But of course, it depends on the supervisor's experience and knowledge on of index insurance. Hence, the importance of training. Thank you, Regina. And yeah, as Regina said, there is more examples and case studies available in the report, which was just published a couple of days and is available on the on the HYI website. So with that, I will now pass on to our next presenter today, um, who's Cynthia. <laughs> and Cynthia plays an active role in the development of index insurance, as well as micro insurance regulations and part of the Agricultural Finance Textual Working Group under the Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. Thank you, Cynthia. Please go. Thank you very much, Hannah. So, next, please. The story of how index insurance and how we came about with these regulations began in 2013. So, in 2013, there was all this buzz about a new product in the market known as Kilimo Salama. Kilimo Salama got everyone in the region interested in this product. And for the fact that Kilimo Salama was looking at the smallholder farmers, the Ugandan insurers were also interested because Uganda is predominantly an agricultural country. So with this background and given the fact that the smallholder farmers make up a huge percentage of our population, the local insurers began to think of a way in which they would also bring a product as good as Kilimo Salama, and that would cover the local. Local smallholder farmers. So, in my 13, Cynthia, together, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, we lost you. So your sound is coming in and out a little bit. I think we lost you just for a moment there. So it's a little bit of background sound. Oh, sorry. Is it better now? Please let me... You can still hear a little bit of background sound, but we can hear you well, so let's continue. Okay. Um, forgive me for the background sound. It's just uh, somewhat happening around. So... In 2013, when this came about, the industry came up with a small agriculture insurance product. Initially, it was indemnity, but this proved to be difficult in the local market. It was difficult to sell, it was expensive, and it still used the, the models that are available, the brokers and the agents. So the insurers decided there had to be a better way and began reaching out to development partners so we initially we had a number of development partners come in to support this agricultural product. And when it eventually metamorphosed into an index product, there came the challenge of determining what would the right index be. So one insurer ran a pilot in northern Uganda, and unfortunately the index triggered and there was a massive loss in the market. The case ended up in court, it was, it was terrible. However, for us at the IRA, that was the first learning point and that guided us to know that the triggers in index insurance actually have to be set well, they have to be understood in the first place. So another pilot study took place and this time it was looking at livestock. And when it looked at livestock, it was looking at the drought areas and the water stress areas in, in the country. In this second pilot study, there was no trigger. So the farmers were like, this doesn't work. How is this going to, how is this even an insurance product? So that eventually brought us back to the drawing board and we had to find a way of getting a product out there that would actually pay out and that would actually bring value. And that is how we eventually came out and hammered out something of the kind of product we have right now. So the next challenge was trying to find out what would be the index, what would be our measurement point. Now, because Uganda is a, a rain-fed agricultural economy, we settled for the, trans, for the evapotranspiration index. And that was given to us with the support of EARS 
and it proved to be effective because at least there was now a, a measurement point. So once the index was set, we again allowed for another pilot study to continue. And this was 2015 now. Now, looking at all these studies and everything, we had to keep, we kept this information and the studies coming in, reports from development partners, reports from the insurers, we kept keeping this information and trying to see, are we in, see whether we're in position to approve this product and approve this pilot because we had no expertise. Locally, there was no expertise and we had few, few places to benchmark on. So, when you look at regulation, we look at that. Next, please. Next, please. Next, please. So, in 2016, the insurers, the insurance association, and 11, it was actually 10 insurers came together, put their forces together, and decided they would run with this product. And in running with that product, the challenge was, how do you reach a small scale farmer? The rate was high because the index was set a bit high. We were not sure about this index. And we concluded that the easiest way for this to run was to balance the basis risk balance the rate, and again, balance the cost to the smallholder farmer. That was a tricky balance for us. So we decided we would need a subsidy to cushion all these unknown areas, at least to bring down the cost if possible. Because indeed, if you look at our index insurance, the rate is, uh, is quite high and is supported. The rate is quite high and is actually supported by the subsidy that brings down the price. When this product eventually came to the IRA to, to commission the five-year pilot that uh, ended in 2020, we had to find another way of ensuring that we are comfortable with this pilot going on. And uh, that's when the only the only criteria we used at that point was the strength of the reinsurer. So the cons the consortium, the co-insurers managed to get Swiss Re on board. And once Swiss Re came on board, we were at least comfortable with saying, go ahead and run this product. When that approval was given, the, the government of Uganda was approached and they were excited about it, took it on and actually gave us 1.3 million US dollars as subsidy support for the five-year pilot product, the five-year pilot project. So next, please. And um, the objectives that were given by the government were, they had to see farmers taking on more loans. They had to see that the smallholder farmers issues were really being addressed, especially in the area of low production and also that the interest rate would be brought down at least on agricultural loans, because agricultural loans at that point in time carried one of the highest interest rates in the market. Next, please. So in setting up the structure of the subsidy, uh, there, there, were four, there are four players who are involved. There is the Ministry of Finance, that's I think we've just lost Cynthia. Cynthia, can you hear us? I hear you at the moment. Cynthia, I'm afraid you've just dropped off. I think you're trying, it sounds like you're trying to come back in though.
Okay, Cynthia, can you hear us at all? Yeah. I think what we might need. Cynthia? What we might need to do here is maybe go on to the next speaker and then in the, at the same so, time we can, ah, Cynthia? Did I lose you? You did, and um, we can hear you again now, but we lost you just at the start actually of this slide that's up at the moment. So okay, I'm start again, but just from this slide. Okay, I'm sorry about that. So in setting up the subsidy scheme, there had to be a way of linking the government to the private sector because it's it's it cannot be a direct linkage. So that meant we had to have the IRA involved and the central bank. Because these are public funds, they cannot just be given to a private entity. So the, the agriculture consortium sells and markets the markets the index product and once they're done on a quarterly basis they submit returns to the IRA the IRA verifies these returns and submits the request for release of the subsidy funds to the ministry of finance the ministry of finance then authorizes the central bank to release the subsidy funds to the agriculture consortium so that is how we work both the IRA and the Agriculture Insurance Consortium periodically submit reports to the Ministry of Finance. Next, please. Next, please. So in setting up this subsidy, we had to find a way of demarcating our market. These, these are categories that we did not have. So it was decided that a small scale farmer is any farmer with less than five acres of land and with a less than 20 million annual income. The large scale is five acres and above. When it came to animals and livestock, um, we used the number of animals as um, a, best, a baseline except for fish, fish is taken as large scale. Even if you have two fish, we will take you as a large scale farmer. And uh, yeah, so for cattle, it's one to 30, you're a small scale farmer, 30 above, you're a large scale farmer. Then came the issue of crops. What crops would we look at first? So we definitely looked at um, the key export crops for Uganda. We looked at coffee, cotton, tea, though for tea tea actually presented quite a challenge but we looked at that as well next please um for the subsidy to run a number of kpis were issued by the government and initially i we, we, we said we couldn't imagine it would get this far in this period of time. So the targets were not that high as we were testing the waters, but from seeing this, this project run, we have seen tremendous growth. We've seen tremendous interest. We've managed to surpass the targets set out. We've tried to have an aggressive awareness drive and from that awareness drive, we've managed to reach 6.3 million farmers just on awareness campaigns. And uh, the conversion is still a bit low, but it's, it's catching up, at least with every passing season. Next, please. So when it came to the distribution channels, given the fact that index insurance, first of all, is new and it's actually not easy to explain. It, it's not an easy product to explain. So we had to look for the easiest way to bring this product to the small older farmers. And uh, the best way to get it was one, to embed it into uh, loans, because these this farmers do take loans. So we have a number of MFIs and circles that give out these loans. And we also have fintechs that have entered this space. We have in Civil Core and Kulima. They use uh, USSD platforms. 
They use USSD platforms to reach a, a large number of farmers. And it, it's really innovative and it, it works because most of these farmers are in, are in areas where the internet may not be readily available. Then we have the large scale farmers who are aggregators. They actually bring in a lot of a lot of farmers into this, these schemes. And then we have the cooperatives for the dairy, the, the dairy and the livestock sectors. So when it comes to agriculture insurance, we've taken a sandbox approach. We have allowed them to distribute through all these platforms without necessarily having special licenses and things like that, but just to see how far this can go and maybe eventually we'll see how it can be regulated. But so far there have been no challenges with the, the kind of distribution that we have. Next, please. So the performance of our subsidy is, uh, as you can see, we surpassed, we, we have surpassed the amount that was given to us, the $1.3 million for the five year subsidy period. However, the ministry remains very open and for the times we have requested for top ups and to have the subsidy increased, to have the subsidy improved upon, we've always gotten a positive response. And for the fact that we have uh, a regulation now that looks at that, that looks at this kind of index insurance, there's at, at least more confidence, and it, it it works. And we 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 want to see this continue. How, however like the pilot period ended we we still look forward to to continuing with the same arrangement until we can get as many farmers as possible under this scheme and um, for the development of the regulator the beauty about all this is that we now have uh, sandbox guidelines in place we open to more innovation, though in the last five years we haven't seen a lot of innovations with the index being used in other areas other than agriculture. But otherwise, that has been our journey and this has been our performance. We've managed to ensure 153,000 plus farmers on the subsidy scheme. So far, there haven't been any major claims or, or anything out of the ordinary and so far so good so thank you very much for listening to me and um, i look forward to your questions thank you cynthia and that was very clear and very interesting and i'm sure your approach there probably resonates with many of the other supervisors um, on today's call i also found it really nice i mean how you started off back in even was it 2016 with pilots and it took quite a number of years before you moved on to develop the regulations and also how you talked about how you'd worked with the government as well as other distribution channels um, in ensuring the products could be get out out to the market. So yeah, a really a very, very nice example. I also actually have one question for you um, before moving on to, to Jacob. I mean, looking at the target markets, um, lack of awareness and consumer protection are often cited as, as big challenges. Uh, what has the IRA in Uganda been doing to try and address um, these challenges? Um, for the consumer awareness, the IRA took it upon themselves to actually be part of these awareness campaigns. Um, so it's part of our quarterly programs to speak about agriculture insurance at every given opportunity. Uh, the agriculture consortium has to submit a report on their awareness campaigns and their impact, the number of farmers they've spoken to. So. It's part of their quarterly returns. They let us know these are the places we've been to, these are the farmers we've spoken to, and they submit that to us. Also, on the side of consumer protection, Cynthia, I'm afraid we lost you just as you were talking about consumer protection. I think we can come, sure. Cynthia, are you back? So you were just about yes. to talk about what you've been doing with um, consumer protection. So for consumer protection, 
we have um, <laughs> we have our complaints bureau really where we use that to gauge the performance of our product out there so far so good and periodically we call for these products to be reviewed so from time to time we've called back some of these products with the various insurers to come back for for review and um, that's what we're trying to do for now as we improve on our expertise we come back and see if and see if uh, the products we have out there are meeting these demands so that's what we've done so far for consumer protection and yeah Thank you, Cynthia. That was very clear. I'm also being told that the sound on my side is a little faint, so I'm going to try and speak up and I, I hope that you can all hear me. Um, we're now just about to move on to our third and our final speaker for today, um, Jakob Nugaraha. But after this, we'll actually change to comments and questions in the chat. So I'd encourage you sort of during this presentation to start thinking up any questions you might like to ask as after this presentation, I will be um, turning, let's say, to the audience. But next we have Jakob. Um, Jakob is gonna be providing us with a different perspective. And this is one from the industry. Um, he is head of the microinsurance and agricultural insurance department at ACA Indonesia, and has been very involved in product development for various microinsurance and agricultural insurance products. Thank you, Jakob. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Hannah. Good morning, everybody. Uh, good evening, or perhaps good night. Uh, I hope uh, you can hear my voice clearly. I try to speak uh, very slow. Uh, we can move to the next slide, please. This is just to show you a brief idea uh, uh, about, about ACA. We've been doing uh, insurance business for more than I think more than 50 years. Uh, but as you can see that agriculture insurance portfolio and or, or uh, a, uh, health index insurance is very small. The majority, uh, we are focusing on, I think, motor vehicle insurance and also property. The next slide, please. So this is our journey in developing uh, index-based uh, insurance start with uh, health tax insurance. Uh, at, uh, it was uh, 2010 when we launched the first product. And I think it was the first of its kind in Indonesia. Uh, at that time, I still have no idea that what we've done uh, has been paid more attention from the government. Uh, and I did know also when my boss asked me to develop this type of product. So in fact, it was uh, microinsurance. So my, my boss just told me, okay, all you have to do is just uh, provide uh, the product, very simple, uh, just cover one type of disease. There is dengue fever, why dengue fever? Because dengue is the common uh, tropical disease, I think in the tropical countries. Uh, it was uh, the effect of mosquito bite. So if you do not go to the hospital, uh, as quick as possible, you might die. Okay, so uh, this is quite a critical and it, it still happens in Indonesia until today. Um, so we start with, uh, with uh, this uh, health index insurance. And along the way, we try to involve in agriculture insurance also since 2015 until today. Uh, we have developed a weather index scheme uh, along with, with other joint venture insurance companies in Indonesia. We also supported by other international NGO. Uh, uh, they will help us to develop uh, the pricing and also the scheme and also on how to deliver it to, uh, to the market. And in 2021, uh, we have, nowadays we have just developed a uh, soil moisture index for cocoa farmers. Um, uh, it was also supported by the insurance association, and I'm glad also the, that the association also actively involved in, in this project because, uh, yeah. you know, uh, handling uh, agriculture is, is, is not the appetite for insurance industry because uh, the insurance industry thought that 
agriculture is, is a very high high risk business. Farmers suffers uh, harvest failures a lot. Uh, so that's why we need to set up a consortium and do it all together. Uh, and uh, the other uh, international uh, finance uh, institution is, is IFC, who supported us uh, in developing this product. Um, yeah, and we also moving forward to other commodities like like corn, uh, rice, uh, cassava, and other horticulture. We also involved in uh, developing uh, aquaculture product like shrimp insurance. That's been I think in two thousand seventeen. Uh, next slide, please. And now uh, uh, I would like to discuss more on uh, health insurance. Um, there are some notes. Uh, we issued this product as a uh, dengue fever insurance, and the trigger or the parameter is uh, the number of platelet count, meaning that um, if you if your uh, the number of blood cell is uh, less than one hundred thousand cubic millimeter, uh, we will pay uh, the claim definitely. So in fact, uh, if uh, once I spoke to the doctor of the government doctor just to uh, get some 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 ideas is it true that if you if your blood cell let's say 90000 uh, uh, cubic millimeter are you definitely suffer from dengue the doctor said no uh, if you want to get the, a, a very exact number it should be 20000 only but at that at that number if we use that trigger, meaning that you are already dying. <laughs> okay, so if we use, uh, let's say, 99,000, we uh, you will have two choices. The first, perhaps you are suffering from typhoid, or the second one, you will suffer from, from uh, dengue. So since this is our first product, okay, let's let's just pay, pay the lump sum. Whether this person suffer or not uh, from dengue, then we just pay the lump sum. And we use the num this this trigger based on the number that was set up by the World Health Organization. So those are our, our, our reference. Um, so the premium it is a case before cover. So everybody has only one unit for twelve months period. Um, the uh, the premium is 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 quite low. It's only three US dollar. So uh, once you have the trigger, then we will pay. Uh, 140 US dollar. That's it. And uh, finally, uh, some people said, "Oh, it is too expensive for a low-income society because we bring this product as a micro insurance." So they said, "Okay, why don't we you just reduce the time instead of 12 months? Why don't we just uh, make it short to only three months?" But of course, we have to reduce, uh, you know, uh, uh, the premium. It is less than one dollar. And also the the benefit, uh, we just you give seventy dollar, and the registration at first we use still use uh, a scratch card because early of two thousand ten, if you want to you know increase your, your your airtime you have to buy a scratch card, you you scratch card and then you text something, then uh, your airtime will will increase. But uh, th that was uh, at, at the beginning, but I think in two thousand. 16 or 17 we, we we do not use scratch card anymore because it gives us headache because you have to distribute the card you have to print the card you have to distribute all over indonesia moreover we we collaborate with the post office we have to distribute it to into i think more than 1000 outlets and after a couple of months the, the scratch card already expired and cannot be used so this is give us headache so that's why we, we try to use uh, electronic code. And how, how do you propose the claim? So if you are suffer from, uh, I mean, if, if your blood cell number is less than 100,000, all you have to do is just text a message to certain numbers. And after that, uh, our call center will, 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 will call you back and explain about uh, the documents that you need to submit. It is basically only two docu documents. The first, uh, the blood test result, which indicates the number of uh, blood cell, and the second one, the doctor's statement that okay, this this uh, this customer is suspect, even though it is only suspect. So you can propose the claim. 
and uh, the claim payment we will pay the claim uh, within 10 working days upon uh, our uh, we receive the, all the human, uh, claim documents so it is it should be fast because it is micro insurance so our target is individual uh, mostly from low income society and we use uh, various distribution channels. Of course, uh, we use uh, our own agency, direct marketing. Uh, the second one, we've used uh, convenience store. The third one is uh, the post office. Um, but in fact, the, the, the main challenges are, of course, uh, uh, convenience store and also the post office. Why? The price is very low. Of course, we have to pay some commission for them. And for, uh, for those uh, distribution channel, well, the commission is very small. Nothing for us, and and also for our uh, direct marketing, they said it is it's better for us to sell you know motor vehicle insurance, which can give us a big premium only in one time. Whilst for for doing this uh, dengue fever, it is very hectic. Uh, the other challenge for us is uh, also lack of insurance knowledge. They do not dare to offer this uh, product. To, uh, to anybody who, who visited this convenience, uh, convenience store. Why? Because it is, it is quite difficult for them to explain what is it. Because the mostly of the Indonesian market, they have no idea about what insurance is all about. So a lack of insurance knowledge is, is a big handicap for, for us to sell this product. The other one, after we use the e-commerce platform, a product claim, we have a uh, this morning, I just find out that in, in one city, we have almost maybe uh, 30 claims within a month, which is, now, which is uh, we never experienced this before. And I think the loss ratio is quite good before, uh, uh, from 2010 until 2020, uh, uh, 19, I think loss ratio is less than, less than 40%. But only within two months, our loss ratio rise up, skyrocketing until perhaps 500%. Uh, and uh, this morning, I've, where I've just found out that there was a syndicate. You know, the doctors try to do something fraudulent, not not because of uh, our you know, our injured, uh, the injured person, but the doctors from the hospital. They do something something very bad. So we will we are now trying to investigate. Uh, this this uh, this this bad behavior. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, this slide uh, it gives you some ideas about agriculture index insurance. Um, uh, the rise uh, community is rise a lack of rainfall during three phases. That is vegetative phase, or reproductive phase, and also ripening phase. So, uh, in each phase, um, we set up a certain uh, rainfall. If the number of rainfall actually uh, is less than uh, the trigger that has been pre-approved before, then we have to pay the claim. Uh, the different payout will be given, so it will depends on the real actual uh, rainfall data. Next slide, please. Yeah. Now the claim procedure is it, it is quite interesting that uh, we don't need any claims. Uh, proposal or submission from, from the customer because we are the one who know first about the number of index, the number of rainfall. So since we are the one who knows the, uh, the, the, the rainfall, then uh, we will tell the, uh, the farmers that uh, all they have to do is just submit their bank, bank account and also the copy of the certificate. And after that, we just pay, uh, deliver, or transfer uh, uh, the claim amount. Uh, the target market is still the same, the individual farmers. Uh, we use uh, rural bank and also cooperatives to distribute this uh, this product. So this product is a bundling process. It is a bundle, a bundle package with the loan. The main challenges, the first, I think, uh, lack of trust from the farmers why because we use the satellite data we use uh, uh, the local uh, weather station agency to collect the database um, and some farmers say that oh you just miss it well you just you you, you don't give you the real data because the farmers also have difficulties in getting this number of rainfall 
The other one is the actual, actual uh, rating or price. Why? Because during this uh, agriculture uh, index insurance, when we um, sell this product, uh, what we did uh, from ACA is we try to also combine with DRR or disaster risk reduction or integrated risk management, meaning that we, we talk to the farmers, you need to do something just to mitigate the risk of harvest failure. You need to change the, the type of seed. You need to have your extra watering system. You need to have extra money to buy extra gasoline um, and, 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 and many things. So um, during that time, we have uh, all the, the triggers are, are, are hit, were hit, meaning that all the farmers eligible for claim. Okay, so when we uh, visited the farmers, we found a very happy basis. Why? Because when we pay the claim, the farmers told me that hey, our net profit almost almost two hundred percent. So it means that the trigger, the number of trigger, is not matched with the real condition. Why? Because the farmers has already do or apply uh, DRR. If they don't apply DRR, I think perhaps they lose money. So this is a very good lesson learned from us. And they, we, we, we wish to include this DRR as a discount factors. So that's why we lose money. Our, our claim ratio almost 900%. Um, and the other challenges is also uh, uh, the farmers in Indonesia, they have lots of subsidy from the government for, for more than 30 years. First from, from, you know, from the seed, all of the rice, all kinds of seeds, uh, and, and also fertilizer. So they get used to this subsidy program. So when we try to approach them, we try to offer our product with a government subsidy. They said, we don't want to pay because it is just very expensive. Even though they only have, you know, um, uh, to pay a very low premium, less than $10. But uh, on the contrary, they are more than happy to pay almost $50 a month to buy a cigarette. Okay, so this is a contradiction. Okay, I, I, think, I think this is one of the biggest challenges also, you know, if you want to sell this uh, agriculture insurance product for the farmers. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, so I think for uh, the, the challenge that I would like to bring to, to this uh, uh, in this, in this good, a very good event is the main roles of agriculture insurance product for us after we use uh, this uh, weather index insurance we have a new perspective okay now our role or as an insurance company we need first we need to reduce the possibility of harvest failure so that was that's why we apply integrated risk management concept so uh, what what can we do to reduce uh, uh, the Harvest failure. First, we encourage the farmers to use drought resistant seed. Perhaps they also use perhaps drip irrigation and other things. Uh, and also, we invite extension workers. Okay, they need to be there. They need to guide the farmers all the time from the beginning, before the planting, after and after they plant the, the harvest. Uh, they apply reward and punishment, which is supported also by mobile apps. Uh, good agriculture practices is one of the ways. And the off takers, we also invite off takers. They can explain uh, to the farmers about the, the, uh, the criteria of this of the harvest that they, they are willing to buy. Perhaps they can also apply the contract farming to keep the, the to keep the price uh, at a certain level, so the farmers will not uh, lose money after harvesting. The farming and finance company they can also use the cashless transaction. And for us, uh, insurance company, we demand the application of good agriculture practice and also good handling practice. So after after they get harvest, sometimes they also uh, suffer from the shortage. And after the harvest, uh, they sh the, the shortage I think it's quite big in Indonesia, ten percent until twenty percent. So so th so those are the things that that uh, we we urge the, uh, uh, the farmers. And, and the, the number one, we need to increase the farmer's net profit. This is our main role as insurance company. Why? To, this, the, the main idea is just to attract the young, 
more young farmers. We want to, uh, to ensure that by doing this DRR, farming is a very good business, okay? And you can be rich by using also, you know, lots of, you know, uh, everybody in the, in the ecosystem should do and should uh, move to the same, uh, the same direction. And also in, in using digital farming, also it really, really helps a lot. Uh, if the farmers have lots of money, they don't mind to pay for insurance premium, whatever costs. So we try to increase the, uh, the, the, the money. The number one, uh, and the other one, uh, what is the ideal agriculture insurance scheme? It could be in the space, it could be indemnity base, whatever it, it, it could it could be it could be done. But for us, indemnity scheme for the case, I think it is, is the most appropriate one. Uh, we set up an ecosystem of uh, sustainable farming based on based on integrated risk management. This is the basic. This is what what, what uh, AC has been done for the last uh, five years, I think. We will pay. We will give the payout when there's a loss. We can also provide wider coverage. We can also provide not only crime risk, but we can, we can also provide pests and disease. Uh, we also can involve local wisdom. You can plant you know, a certain flowers, which is not you know which 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 can protect the uh, the rice from from the pests and also disease. And you know, if we talk about uh, how how do we handle the claim? So uh, the claim survey can be done within only two days after disaster happened. And we try to impose a, a fast claim settlement. Um, we can have, uh, we can deliver the claim payout within the work, uh, 10 working days upon approval. But I think uh, 10 working days is still accepted by, by the farmers. They can still accept, why? Because most of the farmers get the loan uh, from, let's say from, from the bank or the rural bank. And normally, uh, the due date of the loan settlement is still far away. Sometimes, two months or three months after the, uh, the harvesting harvesting day. So, uh, uh, ten days is not a big issue for the farmers, I think, uh, uh, to get to re to receive the uh, the claim payment from the insurance company. And the the other one is the claim payment. What we pay, it could help the farmers cover all expenses expenses before the due date. And also the second one is our payment should in, 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 uh, enable the farmers to have a debris removal after the disaster. Why after the disaster, uh, everybody is, uh, everything is, is, is just messed out. So you need to do something. You need to clear up uh, your land. So it means that you need money. And also if, if the farmers uh, suffer from harvest failure, they don't have money. So normally they go to you know the money lender to buy up to, to, to get extra money with a very high interest. So we want to, to cut it off. So that's why in our uh, sum insured we include not only the uh, the expenses but also uh, the daily life for the farmers. Um, we try to manage the loss ratio less than seventy five percent, and based on what we have done for I think for the last five years, our loss ratio. Uh, is, is less than 40%. Even though the, 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 the hectares is still small, less than, I think, less than 5,000 hectares. But we have a very good result by applying this DRR. And also the last what the last thing is, there is no premium subsidy from the government. Because why? Because we believe, based on what we have done, the farmer have the money. As long as we can um, uh, encourage them that you are not only a farmer, but you are a businessman. Okay, you have to change the, the, the mind. Uh, this is not easy. Uh, we took also about perhaps two or three planting season, and not to mention also the pilot project first. And we, we can convince them that you have lots of money. There. So uh, the main idea, reduce the possibility of harvest failure. And second one, increase the farmer's net profit. So if the farmers have lots of money, you know, you don't need government help to pay from from uh, for for your insurance premium. You can also buy, you know, a high higher quality of seed. That's it. And uh, I think this is the last slide, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you, Jacob. That was very okay, clear. Thank you. thank you. That was good and clear and very interesting. 
I particularly liked your points at the end about how through using this sort of integrated risk management approach, you've actually managed to get away from the reliance on subsidies. And I think that's very interesting. I also like I mean, the innovative example you shared of how index insurance has been used for dengue yeah. fever. So also in health insurance, yeah. because often people automatically just think across to sort of catastrophes and weather events. And it's really interesting to see it applied sort of elsewhere. I do have questions myself, but I can also see we already have um, questions in the chat. So I'm actually going to go back to you, um, Yakov, now with a question from the chat. Um, your, your company actually sells both parametric products and also traditional products. And the question is really looking at what is the interaction between parametric products and traditional insurance? Yeah, and yeah. sort of linked to this, I mean, lack of insurance knowledge is you also cited in your presentation as a challenge. Do you find that the use of parametric insurance contributes to raising awareness and therefore also helping encourage um, more consumer purchase of traditional insurance products? I think uh, whichever uh, insurance scheme you choose, either um, parametric or, 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 or traditional insurance protection, you will face the same problem that is you have to explain your product uh, to uh, to the farmers because I think mostly for the farmers, they have no idea about how does it work. Um, if uh, based on based on my experience, uh, it will take time. You need to go there you, because the, the, um, the, the problem is the location of the rice field uh, where we, we do our project, um, you cannot take a plane. You will need to take a train there. Yeah, uh, I think it will take about uh, six to eight hours drive from 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 the office from from Jakarta to there to go there. So, if you uh, after you arrive there, you need to speak slowly to the farmers in their own language because sometimes some of the farmers they cannot. Uh, he, uh, they cannot easily understand the way you talk, so you have to speak it very, very, you know, very, dis uh, you know, uh, very politely. Use a very simple language, and uh, based on based on our experience, uh, after explaining index and also explaining indemnity, I think for me it is it is much much more easier if you ex use uh, index. Uh, uh, sorry, so, so indemnity. Why? Normally, the farmer uh, get the loan from, from from the bank. So all you need to do, we want to help you uh, to cover your 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 loan. That's it. So uh, our product will cover you from uh, not only uh, uh, lack of rainfall, that is drought, but we can cover you from let's say tropical typhoon. Uh, just just name it. Uh, um, a few a few parents that you can cover that is the first the second one um just to explain that after the uh, after disaster okay after disaster all you have to do is just you need still to to do your uh, risk mitigation let's say in in what in what in what in, in the, uh, one hectare area there was a typhoon and should there be only let's say 50% of the area was impacted and the rest 50% is still good. So you need to keep this uh, good uh, good uh, planting, good good plants to be survived until the end. So you can at least you, you, say, you have something that you can sell. So uh, we invite also the agronomists or the extension workers. We work together, what can we do? Can, it is just like a baby. If you go to the hospital, then the doctor will try the best effort to save your baby. Just like that. Okay, so the farmers think, okay, I will do my best so we can still get, get some, some, something to, uh, to be harvested. And after they get harvested, okay, uh, normally farmers are happy because they can survive, they have something. And when they sell, uh, we just uh, ask them about uh, uh, how many kilograms the harvest is. Uh, to whom you sell this uh, your 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 your, uh, your rice, your paddy, and at what price? So so that's why we involve the agronomists 
to make sure that the quality of the rice is 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 is, is, uh, is the top quality. So if you can produce the top quality, the pricing is is quite good. So okay, um, uh, after you get the money, just tell us how much money which is which is in in your bank account now. Okay. Oh, I have this deal. Uh, this money. Let's say, if the loan, let's say, if they get loan, loan, let's say, one hundred US dollar, and they get only ninety US dollar, meaning that you need another ten US dollar. Okay. So we will. We just the insurance company will just give you directly ten US dollar. So you don't have to. You know. Uh, you don't. Um, your reputation is still good because you can. You can repay back the whole loan only within. Okay, so before the due date, since you lose money, so we will give you another, you know, uh, another let's say, uh, five years dollar or ten years dollar. What for? It is for your, you know, for your daily life, and for you to clean up, to clean up the messes. Okay, so at least the farmers still have ten years dollar. So those, those, those are the things that we try to, to approach uh, to the farmers. It is not easy, but the, normally the farmers said. Uh, this type of product is really on, on our side. Why? Because I think for more than 30 years, most of insurance product only support or only cover, you know, uh, the rich, I mean, quote unquote, the bank. Yeah, I think, I think those are the things yeah, that we've done. Thank you, Jakob. Um, yeah, certainly a challenge with insurance awareness, but obviously the, the quality of the product coming out and the farmer's experience of it, I guess, yeah. is the key to really encouraging greater uptake in the long run. Um, we're running very much out of time, but I, we do have another question, which I'm just going to ask to Cynthia. And then after that, I think we're probably going to have to wrap things up. So, Cynthia, I have a question from uh, Mucholo Madenda, and they were asking you actually about the subsidies. And they were saying um, why the subsidy amount um, does not seem to be correlated um, with the number of farms covered. Okay. The, the reason why it may not be correlated is because the subsidy is structured for the small colder farmers. Uh, they have a 50% subsidy. For the large scale farmers, they have a 30% subsidy. And for those in disaster prone areas, they have an 80% subsidy. So it doesn't necessarily correlate that easily, but that's how it's broken down. Okay, thank you. That was very clear. Um, any last questions? Just very briefly, one last chance. And also you can raise your hand and you can actually ask questions um, yourself. We can unmute you. Okay, with that, then I will hand over to Carolyn, who's just going to let you know a little bit about what we have um, Thank you, Hannah. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Hannah. Very, I think that was actually a very interesting presentation from our speakers and very nice to hear um, Uganda's journey up to now, as well as ACA's um, index insurance products and also highlights from A2I survey findings on index based insurance. So, yeah, unfortunately, we have run out of time and come to the end of our session today. Um, I know it's difficult to have all these issues in just over an hour, but I think we have made quite a good start with the inputs that we received today. So once again, thank you to um, our excellent speakers, Regina, Cynthia, and Jakob, who took time to join us today, and as well as to Connor for the IIS remarks in the beginning. Um, I'd, look, I'd also like to invite all our participants to um, have a look at A2I's recently published inclusive insurance regulations map that highlights um, uh, not only um, inclusive insurance regulations from various countries, but other interventions, including uh, index uh, insurance regulations in countries that have implemented it. Um, in terms of the next uh, next events, so the next dialogue coming up uh, in the A2I IS series will be taking place on the 22nd of April focusing on insurance and the sustainable development goals. So keep an eye on our website for more information as well as to register for the for that webinar. So also finally, many thanks also to Hannah for moderating today's dialogue. And I'll now hand over back to her for final remarks and just to briefly close the session as well. 
Thank you, Carolyn. And really just a big thank you from my side also to the excellent presentations we had, so to the speakers, to the excellent presentations we had today. Also a thank you to A2I team for all the work that goes in behind the scenes um, to organizing these calls. Um, I hope you'll all be joining us on our next call, which is looking at the SDGs, as Carolyn said, which has been taking place on April the 22nd. And with that, I wish you a, a good rest of the day. Um, thanks again for engaging. Thanks for participating. And I hope to see you all soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.